इफ यू लव वॉट यूर डूइंग मतलब ये तो एक एकदम क्लीशे सा डायलॉग है लेकिन इफ यू रियली लव वॉट यूर डूइंग तो निकल जा रहा है टाइम कोई दिक्कत नहीं है and uh, express our gratitude for having us in your office and giving us uh, such time in this hard times and among your busy schedule so most welcome uh, so whenever a student chooses to uh, join law or then he for the first time he thinks about becoming a lawyer yes so uh, that's the first idea which he gets of course so so what made you choose this particular field and or, or at what point you decided to make this law as a career in this field specifically and then if we we'll discuss in detail what made you choose litigation also. of course litigation so for me personally there were a lot of governing factors see everybody has different circumstances prevailing in their lives and me myself i am a third generation lawyer in my family so as i have grown up i have come across my family members discussing cases amongst each other there were some peculiar circumstances when one of my family member was headed opposed against another in a case okay. in a certain case and they used to discuss whatever the uh, points in their cases are they used to uh, argue with each other like in a mock way and uh, some of the times it would happen that Uh, when there is a new amendment coming or when there is a new law to be introduced in the parliament or a new bill has been passed they would discuss all of these matters in front of me so all of that really spiked my interest towards the uh, this certain particular profession also i feel that this profession gives me a much better understanding about the society like all the laws which laws what do laws do laws govern the rules of the society right <clears throat> whatever the prevailing laws are if you are well versed with all of these laws like for example if we take uh, the major acts say criminal procedure code ipc if you are well versed in these then you are well aware that what your rights are what what are the extent and what are the limits to which the police or the investigating authorities can uh, super imposing on you and what would your rights be if there is for example uh, a particular incident of uh, search or seizure at your own place and if most importantly if you are well versed with the constitution of india you know what your fundamental rights are you know what duties you have towards the nation as a citizen and these matters uh these laws like for example uh constitution we read the constitution when we are in, i guess in the 6th or 7th grade Sims. when civics civics as a subject is introduced and it gave, gives you a basic uh understanding towards how our country is run i mean what uh is the most important thing which uh is which what is the uh the basic principle the underlying principle the mother of all laws the constitution if if a person is well versed with the constitution they would know what their fundamental rights are what their duties are what uh what other what are the other manners in which uh, the country is run as a whole right like uh, all the constitutional authorities who a president is who a prime minister is who a chief minister is so my as a student in my school when i read civics and i came across constitution it kind of gave me a basic curiosity towards understanding that what is this constitution what what is this document that is responsible behind the running of the entire country and then as i grew up as i told you uh, my family members used to discuss the laws and discuss cases that really spiked my interest so that is how i decided that you no know, law is the field for me okay so uh, as you said uh, knowing about law not only uh, helps a lawyer or a person who is who is want who wants to become a lawyer but also equips a person as a good citizen of the country of course uh, to face day to day things 
in a more legal and you know uh, knowledgeable manner. Uh, as you also said, sir, that uh, the family uh, surrounding also helped you spike into interest in law. Uh, so I want to know, or uh, the viewers want to really love to know that what made you choose litigation as a career in law? Because when you choose law, there are multifaceted careers. Like you can become a law professor if you do LLM, or you can become uh, an employee in public sector undertakings, or any other uh, legal research fields also are there. So what made you choose litigation? So as I said, the my most of uh, the family members who are into this profession, they are practicing lawyers. They practice in the district court, they practice in the high court. So as I have grown up, as I told you, I have come across a lot of arguments, debates, discussions about cases in which they were involved. So I had a first hand account of how the practical uh, situation is going on. Like people, when there was, as I said, there were certain instances when my, uh, one of my family member would be appearing for one party and another family member would be appearing for the opposite party. So that is a very rare condition which people do not usually go through. Okay. So that really developed my interest towards the practice of law. And then as a law student, when I enrolled for law, I started pursuing my course. I, in the beginning, I had a little bit of doubts whether I should go for corporate litigation or should I do something else. But then as I uh, started doing my internships under the uh, various lawyers in the courts, I understood that no, this is, there is a certain thrill in this line of work. Uh, there is a infinite scope of, you know, uh, nurturing your own mind. So uh, it gives another level of satisfaction when you are first hand responsible for solving people's disputes. People come to you with their own grievances, there are wide ranging problems which people face and then when you by your own efforts help them in resolving their disputes and give them the relief that they want, that gives another level of satisfaction. So that I used to experience it and now when I have entered the field I get to experience it myself like I feel at the end of the day when I uh, provide a certain relief to my client it gives me another level of satisfaction. satisfaction yeah so I feel like there is something which I am first hand doing in helping a person helping the society and my elders also used to say that lawyers play a very key role in the uh, in the nurturing of a society they and uh, one of the I do not remember the name of the judge but then I had read someone's speech in which they had said that lawyers are the engineers of the society now that statement on a, on prima facie first hand account you maybe it would be difficult to understand but then engineers what do engineers do Engineers apply their mind, apply their uh, knowledge, they apply their minds, they use their knowledge to craft, to innovate, to develop new ways for the furtherance of the progress of the mankind. mankind. So in a way, what they do uh, results in the progress of the society. So that statement that the lawyers are Engineer the engineers society. of the society. So it makes so much sense to me now because let's say, let's take an example. Uh, let's take an example of the Oliga Telis case, the landmark case in which the right to livelihood was introduced. Now somebody, the hawkers, the street hawkers, street vendors, they approach the court. They approach the lawyer. He, I have such a such problem. I have, uh, there is, I need to have a right to practice my own livelihood, to do what I want to do, to so a lawyer who was responsible for taking that case to the court, contending on behalf of the party, and then ultimately it culminated in uh, the right to livelihood being incorporated as a fundamental right. So the Oligatelis case, and there are various other cases in which the fundamental rights have been incorporated 
the definition of fundamental rights right to life and personal liberty the freedom of speech and expression all of these have been broadened how have been, these been broadened by the efforts of lawyers who approach the supreme court they approach the high courts and they contend the cases and because of their efforts the the magnitude of a person's fundamental right gets increased multi multiplied increase uh, multiply so this is what i think that a lawyer if a lawyer puts in his effort towards contending towards uh, representing his client he can do a lot of stuff for the society this is what i think and that is why litigation as a profession has always fascinated me okay. i think so this will be the title of our this interview that uh, lawyers are the engineers of the society yeah, this, sure. is the, this is the first time uh, i am listening uh, that the law profession in this perspective so <coughs> sir uh, after knowing that uh, you have had such influences uh, for law what was your experience uh, would you like to tell us about your college life and which college in which college you studied and what was your whole experience while studying there okay so i studied in hidayatullah national law university raipur uh, i entered the college in 2011 graduated in 2016 and uh, the experience was quite good because of course it's a national law university the resources that they provide you for your nurturement that is very good that is very nourishing and the certain facilities that they provide for example the libraries and the uh, the fully operational it labs and the internet facilities all of them especially the academic teachers professors they play a very good role in shaping your uh, journey as a law student and uh, one thing i would really like to point out is that a law student they should spend as much time as they can in the library because the collection of books that a college provides a person would take at least decades to maintain such a library because there are foreign authors there are domestic authors also so that kind of a collection is very rare to get and my experience was quite good because uh, firstly the faculty was very good uh, i am a uh, i have done honors in constitution and the faculty that i had was madam kaumudi challa she was a she what do i say i do not even have words for yeah. the kind of knowledge that she possesses she had taught us constitutional law and administrative law and those subjects are deeply ingrained in our minds right now yeah. and the way she used to teach us and similarly it goes for the other subjects as well so the kind of uh, guidance that you get by the teachers the kind of uh, exposure that you get because in an llu there are students who come from all across the country so you get to experience different cultures different kind of uh, languages and uh, people from different pe- places like uh, people who come from metro cities they bear a different kind of an iq usually that happens and uh, all in all it was a very great experience So you have been out of as you have told us that you have been out of law school for last four years i think so yes from here so uh, what is your advice to students who have just passed uh, in this year of 2020 the year of pandemic oh. and uh, what is your advice to them who are the freshly law graduates yeah. and uh, whether they should opt for further studies in law or not what do you think on that well yeah this is a very unique situation which has arisen due to the pandemic yeah. and uh, it must be very infuriating for people who have just graduated and now they do not have the means to go out and look for jobs and uh, even the courts were closed so people were not able to go out uh those who have freshly graduated this pandemic period gave us 
a certain uh, boon in the matters of uh, electronic i mean webinars electronic seminars so a lot courts of also have been functioning in electronic means also yes yes the courts also and uh, i personally enrolled in a different courses not not related to law but then whatever uh, i whatever interest i used to have okay. before law i enrolled in certificate courses and all so that is an opportunity that students have right now who have freshly graduated and also this time has given them uh, an ample of time to go and revisit the subjects that they have studied since the first year because once you pass out of law uh, law school you do not really have much time to go and revisit whatever you have been taught because the the evaluation system just teaches you to get done with the subject as soon as the exam is done so there is this opportunity that you go and study back and just be patient this time shall this time shall also pass this is just just phase and after that you know, everybody will get the opportunity to go out and just try their best now moving on to a bit uh, technical and the questions which are in dispute and in news Hmm. Uh, nowadays, so uh, the question is, sir, uh, as our democracy is maturing, uh, what are the challenges like that lie ahead? Like, uh, see in, in this perspective that uh, the current governments and the, the amendments it is doing to constitution, yeah. and specifically what it is uh, doing to the uh, media nowadays, uh, the the amount of news and the amount of propaganda. And uh, and the environment which it is creating, uh, what is your take on that? There is no second opinion on the fact that media has been curtailed. There is a there has been a lot of instances where journalists have been arrested and they are in jail for a very long time right now. And then on the contrary, there are examples where a journalist gets preferential treatment. I wouldn't take the names, but everybody knows right. the case. and one would say that these are difficult times this current regime some would say has been acting in a very controversial manner and uh, the way sort the media has been curtailed the way a lot of journalists have been arrested and their rights have been severely violated uh, it, it would seem that india is heading towards a very darker place and there are actually facts which would corroborate the 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 same for example if one would see the press freedom index india ranks 140 out of 180 countries that is a very very scary statistic and uh, there are there are actually a lot of institutes and companies and uh, Uh, institutes operating at a global scale they measure how the democracy of a country is operating i would give a particular instance there is this economist intelligence unit which operates out of uk they measure the democracy on the basis of uh, how well the participation is of the public what is the political atmosphere and uh, the freedom of press of course so they use these uh, measurement tactics to ultimately give project give a score to the democracy of a country and uh, very unfortunately from 2018 to 2019 in just one year india slipped 10 places india now holds 51st rank and uh, there are certain other uh, think tanks there are other bodies also which measure democracy for example there is this uh, vdem from sweden and the report says that uh, india the democracy in india is actually in a declining phase so all these reports done from independent third party bodies they would show they would shed light on the fact that india's democracy is not functioning very well right now but then on the plus side one can see for example i gave you the ranking which was given by eiu 
from UK. So their rank was uh, India's rank at that time uh, at uh, in 2018 was 41st. 41st out of I guess 190 democracies which there are in uh, in this world. So I think that is a very decent rank which India held. And uh, considering the fact that India is such a wide, such a huge country hosting so many, such a variety, such a diversity, a cultural, linguistic, religious, such thing, whatever fascist kind of regimes are imposed by the government, that would play a very active role. And personally, when students from Delhi, they stood up against the anti-CA uh, uh, protests and everything that kind of inspired me a lot because it showed that students are not going to just sit back and relax like the image which is portrayed that uh, students do not do anything they just chill and relax it is not the thing the first the first group of people who stood up against the anti-CA protests was the students so I think that the youth has a very major role to play in this and if more and more people are acquainted with the constitution, more and more people start uh, being aware of what the current state of affairs are and they start voicing their opinions, then I think that uh, of course India would go towards a bit, very better place. So very rightly said that youth should very actively and very uh, in a very forefront manner participate in the uh, election of the government and the overall uh, working of the democracy. Yeah. Strengthening of laws, how can reduce the crime in society? Like if any instance happens, sometimes custodial death happens, sometimes rape happens, then the society speaks for to make uh, more strengthen the laws in IPCs. Mm. Then how can uh, how that strengthening of laws can reduce the crime in society what is your take on this i think is exactly the same that strengthening the strengthening the laws i think delivers a message towards the society it delivers it kind of puts it in the subconscious of those people who are going to going to perform some wrongdoings who are going to perform some criminal acts it would somewhere it would be fed in their minds that what their act, what what the consequences to their act would be, and strengthening the laws is very important because after a point of time there comes a way, uh, there comes a static, there comes a uh, saturation point to which people think that what what. what consequence would come. This certain consequence, yes, we'll deal with it, no problem at all. So uh, from time to time, if the laws start getting strengthening, it also incorporates a fear in the minds of those people who are going to do the criminal acts and also it uh, provides a satisfaction to the public that yes, the government is taking steps towards uh, strengthening the laws and uh, the government is conscious towards what the need of the society is. So it serves a dual purpose, one for the criminal act doers and other for the normal public. So it gives them a level of assurance, it gives them relief that yes, this might help us, this might help reduce the crime. Whether it does or not is a different story, but then it, what it serves to do is this twofold thing. So I think strengthening the laws reduces the crime. That is in theory, I mean, well, the practical statistics is something that would have to be seen, by surveyed and everything. Okay. But in spirit, I think yes. Sir, in practical, 90% uh, of the accused, they don't know the law. Like uh, the person who committed rape, he actually don't know the consequence of that uh, rape. In uh, what are the laws given in IPC, he don't know about that. Yes. So how can we expect uh, from that uh, a criminal mind, like a guilty mind person who is committing, again who is committing the crime, ki, uh, the strengthening of laws can stop that man from doing that crime? 
See, what it does is that by strengthening the laws, we mean that there is an amendment which would be carried out in the laws. Mm -hmm. Like if there is a, a pro, if the stipulated punishment is imprisonment for three years, now if there is an amendment carried out, the it it delivers a message towards the public. It, there it would be flashed in the newspapers. It would be debated in the news channels that the punishment is uh, proposed to be increased. Yes. You are right in the point that most of the criminal minds, they do not care. They just have to do their act. They mostly do not think about the consequences. You are right on that part. But what can also be seen is that not all of them are mentally uh, insane. Right? Not all of them are incapable of understanding the consequences. Most of them do. Most of them do understand, but they are so habituated uh, in offending in doing the crime, they are so uh, used to doing crimes that they do not care about the consequences. So, again, it is a theory that uh, strengthening the laws would help in redu reduction of crimes, but as I said, it serves a dual purpose. One, if the person is capable to understand the consequences, the legal consequences which would follow, in that case, well and good. And otherwise, it is also for the public. It also serves as a deterrent to the, to the public that they would know that this act is not to be committed. So, as I said, not all of them are completely out of their minds. Most of them, some of them, are aware what the consequences could be. So, that is it. Sir, uh, uh... We recently Supreme Court quoted one statement that uh, you should go to High Court under Article 226 mm. and that thing portrays very differently in the society mm. like uh, ki it's our right to go to Supreme Court under Article 32 and we want to go to Supreme Court at least uh, but it's a, if we see as a procedure like lower court then High Court mm. uh, then Supreme Court then we should go first to the supreme uh, to the high court, high court under yeah. article 226 yes because supreme court is already overburdened with uh, so many cases so sir how we can overcome this problem in the society like there are so many educated people who hmm. called as so called educated people but they also portray these things dif very differently in, and uh, convey to the next person this message said is quite correct and uh, yes people think that once they have a dispute they should go straight away to the supreme court because maybe they would listen to them much better whatever presuppositions they have then in their minds i think that people prefer going to the supreme court directly because one reason might also be because lawyers over there have uh, they are well renowned lawyers over there people hear their names all across the country Names like Mahesh Jetmalani, names like Dushan Dave, these names are heard by the people from all over the country. So they, they think that their disputes would be better solved by those lawyers. But then again, there is a certain procedure. One has to approach the High Court under Article 226. And after that, if they are aggrieved by that order, if, they, if the High Court failed to give them a relief, then they are supposed to go to the Supreme Court. One possible solution out of this was given by our Attorney General K.K. Venu Gopal recently on 26th of November. He said that there should be intermediate courts, courts which would operate between High Court and the Supreme Courts. So those courts would act as courts of appeal. Now what would happen because of that is, one, if, if uh, there is, uh, if one is aggrieved by the order of a High Court, he would have an intermediate court for an appeal before approaching the Supreme Court. Now, that is a structural change. It is a change in the organization. And it is just a proposal. But what that would result in is that it would result in uh, reducing the pendency of cases be before the Supreme Court. And what that would help, how that would help is that uh, the Supreme Court would be in a position to help uh, hear people much better, hear the cases much better and uh, they would be uh, able to allocate much more time in hearing the cases and uh, yes people 
tend to approach the Supreme Court before High Court and then they get their cases dismissed from there with heavy costs, imposition of heavy costs. And But for that, people are supposed to realize that actually High Courts have more power than the Supreme Court. At the ambit of Article 226 is wider than the ambit of Article 32. But this is something a layman is not supposed to know. They cannot supposedly know about it. So people should be made aware of it. And as again I said, lawyers, lawyers play a key role in this. People, the lawyers should advise their clients better. If they do that, then uh, maybe people would understand the procedure of how things are going to, what, what the established procedure is. Sir, एक बहुत बड़ा चेंज जो आप जब कॉलेज में थे और आप तब इंटर्नशिप कर रहे होंगे और आज जब आप खुद लॉयर बन गए होंगे तो उसमें एक कैसा चेंज हुआ आपके माइंड में और एक क्या पर्सपेक्टिव नया डेवलप हुआ बीइंग अ इंटर्न ही उस समय और आज जो आप लॉयर बन गए उस समय the change in mindset as an internee versus now as a practicing lawyer. Now, as an internee, people are young. They are college students. They are not very serious about it. Some of them are, of course. I wasn't. But uh, as an internee also, in the initial internships, in the initial years, people tend to not be so serious. They just want to get done with the college and then take a break, go enjoy themselves and then refresh and go back to college again. Now that is one kind of a mindset which people have. Secondly, uh, internees, they are not given a huge role, the, the, they are not given much responsibilities, they are just, what, they, what the internees deal with is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, one would develop a lot of confidence that okay this is something which I can do very easily no problem at all but when you enter the field you realize that no our senior had was doing most of the work and what I was doing was just barely nothing at all so this is a change which comes that uh, especially because in the internship phase one takes a lot of time to do that bare minimum work which they have been asked to and now as a practicing person, they have the same amount of time in which they have to do a lot of work. So the efficiency increases as uh, one gets into the profession and the responsibility increases and uh, the pressure increases. So all in all, it matures you a lot as you transcend from being an internee to a practicing person. और प्लस पर डे आप कितने एफर्ट डाल रहे हो इसके बाद से ग्रेजुएशन के बाद से वो काउंट करता है पहले का तो कुछ मायने नहीं रखता कुछ भी नहीं रखता क्योंकि वैसे भी भाई तुम टॉट्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टीपीए ये सब पढ़े थे कब सेकंड थर्ड सेमेस्टर है फोर्थ सेमेस्टर में क्या याद रहेगा कुछ कुछ याद नहीं रहता नए सिरे से जब पढ़ोगे तभी होता है वो